What's up guys, Steven here, your honest trading coach, and I want to do something kind of fun today. Tom, Dick, and Harry each walk into a bar. <laughs> Just kidding. Tom, Dick, and Harry all have a $1,000 trading account. Tom, Dick, and Harry all place the same exact trade. It's a long trade on the euro dollar. They're expecting the euro dollar to go up. But unfortunately for Tom, Dick, and Harry, the trade loses. Which, by the way, happens a lot, even to professional traders. As this trade loses, I want you to pay attention to each of their faces. Tom is devastated. Dick thinks he probably could have done better, and Harry is totally fine. Now, what is the difference between the emotional state of all three of these traders? Well, it's one thing, and that one thing is risk management. You see, Tom here is a new trader and didn't understand risk management, so he risked his entire account. His $1,000 account, because of one loss in this trade, is now a $0 account. Dick here didn't really understand risk management, so he was risking about 10% of his account on this singular trade, and because of that 10% risk, he lost 100 bucks here. Which isn't devastating the way Tom lost money, but still stings. Now, next up we have Harry. Harry's totally fine. Why is Harry totally fine? Because he absolutely understands risk management and he decided to only risk 1% of his total account value on this specific trade. Harry's fine because Harry only lost $10. Now, let me ask you a question. Which one of these traders out of the three do you think is less likely to blow an account and more likely to become a professional, consistently profitable trader? For damn sure, it's not Tom. Old Tom here has already blown his account. Dick is going to have a really hard time if he's risking 10% for a trade and losing $100 every time. He's probably going to blow that account. If not, he will at least stop trading because of how bad all these losses hurt, how bad they sting. So he's not going to be the one to become consistently profitable. On the other hand, Harry has a very likely chance of becoming consistently profitable because he's doing risk management correctly and actually has a plan. Today, that's what we're discussing is risk management. I'm gonna go over everything you need to know in order to understand risk management and then also teach you how to calculate risk per trade in a percentage of your account. I get that question a lot. People always ask me, traders come to me and ask, they say I have been trading so long based on a lot size, I don't understand how to trade based on a certain percentage of my account. I'm going to show you how to do that today as well so that by the end of the video, you can avoid being Tom, you can avoid being Dick, and you can become more like Harry. Can't wait to see you on the other side of the intro and disclaimer. Until then, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and click that like button for me. Follow us over on Instagram at The Trading Channel, and I'll see you after the intro. I'm sure you've heard the term risk management before, but the question is, do you know how to implement risk management into your trading right now? If not, then that's what I'm going to go over in the beginning of this video is how to implement risk management in your trading right now to avoid losing more than you want to and also to help you avoid blowing an account. Before we do that though, before we jump over to the charts and start talking about implementing risk management, I want to briefly go over the triangle of trading success. You see, trading success is not just knowing risk management. It's not just having a perfect strategy. There's a lot you have to master and everyone that has mastered these three things is currently a professional trader and currently consistently profiting. And if you're missing even one of them, then it's probably the reason that you're losing money in your trading right now. So what are they? The first thing is the strategy or system we're going to abbreviate with S that provides an edge over the market. Secondly, is what we're talking about today, having a crystal clear crystal clear risk management plan stumbled over that one for a minute that you follow diligently and following that risk management plan and following that strategy is called discipline sticking to the plan right so if you master all three of these that's when you will become a profitable trader if you're missing one that's why you're currently losing in the markets now as I said, today we're going over risk management. We've already talked about strategies and systems. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner of your screen for strategies and systems. I've done two videos explaining strategies that I'm currently using that provide me an edge over the market for free here on YouTube. Again, top right hand corner and links in the description for those. In terms of risk management, the first thing you have to understand when implementing a risk management plan 
is that you need to have a spot in the market where you know you're wrong and you're going to get out. It's not enough to say, let's say you have a thousand dollar account, you have an account here of 1K and you say, okay, well, I only want to risk 2% of that account, meaning I only want to ever lose $200. Well, where's that $200 going to be if you just randomly buy the Dollar Canada right now? Is $200 going to be here or here? Do you think that matters? And the answer is yes. The first step is not going, I only want to risk $200. The first step is figuring out where you're wrong and where you want to get out of the trade. Because no matter what, even if you have every technical indication that a market may rise on the dollar Canada here, for instance, and you have the perfect trading setup, sometimes you're going to be wrong. And you don't want that wrong trade to end up losing you more than you really wanted to lose on that specific trade. That can lead to some heavy psychological problems in your trading. So because of that, I use and would recommend using something called a stop loss. So a stop loss is nothing more I'm going to bring all the profit taking tool here. A stop loss is nothing more than saying, okay, right now, the dollar Canada is creating a double bottom. Well, if bright, if price breaks through this double bottom, like so, then we're no longer in a double bottom. We're in trend continuation. I don't want to be in the trade. Well, at what level do you not want to be in the trade below this double bottom would be a fine place for that. Now we actually have a place we're wrong. We have a place where we're like, okay, my analysis may have been great, but the market's not cooperating right now, and I'm, I'm willing to take this loss. But even with the place in mind, this now gives us the opportunity to create a $200 risk with this stop loss. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Again, we're talking about implementing this risk management into your trading right now. So how would you do that? Let's set up the trade here. Let's pretend we're placing a long trade on the dollar Canada based on this double bottom we see right here. So we have this double bottom. And because of that, we want to buy the dollar Canada. And again, our stop loss is below the wick of that double bottom. The lowest low of the double bottom is where we want to put a stop loss because at that point, if the market continues, then we're just in trend continuation. And although our analysis was good, the trade's not going to work out in our favor. So we know that and we're ready to take that loss and we want this max loss to be $200. Well, since we already have the place, it's going to be 19 pips is what we're risking. We'll go ahead and put a target up here at the previous resistance level. A little over two to one risk reward, really cool. And right now you could go, okay, 19 pips on the dollar Canada. How many, what's the lot size I need to use in order to calculate $200 of that 19 pips? Do you see how damn complicated that sounded? Technology is a beautiful thing. And not, I, although I know how to calculate that, I'm not gonna give you the most boring math lesson in the world right now. Instead, I'm gonna show you a badass tool technology provides where all you have to do on TradingView, the platform I use, I'm sure other platforms have something very similar, is click trade, click right click, then click trade, then cl click create new order. Once you create the new order, we're wanting to buy the dollar Canada. If we put our stop loss in pips, which is 19, remember we're like, okay, I wanna be out of this market. At this level, this level happens to be 19 pips away from my entry. With that being the case, all we have to do at this stop loss is put 19 pips. At this point, I want you to look right up here. It provides you with all the information you need to implement the risk management plan that you decide to create. Just as an arbitrary number and example, and in no way is this advice on what you should risk in your own trading. I don't know your financial situation, but as an arbitrary number and as an example, if you wanted to risk 2% of your account, all you would do right here where it says percent risk after typing in your stop loss is put two. How much easier is that than going through and trying to figure out the math, right? And if you needed to know the amount of units you had to purchase in order to make that happen for let's say a different brokerage, maybe you're not trading through TradingView, right here's the units. It tells you the units you would need to purchase in order to have a 2% risk with whatever account size you have. Tell me that's not super easy. That's how you would implement this. Now, you can do this by percent risk, or if you just wanted to say, I only want to risk $100, you could put $100 in the amount of your currency you want to risk, and it would give you the amount of units you need in order to do that. I personally trade through TradingView, so for me, it's as easy as saying, okay, I want to risk 2% of my account. 
My take profit is 46 pips. I'll put in 46 and it's a lot better actually to do it by price right here. But just for this example, I'm not going to go through all that. But right now all I'd have to do is hit buy and my entire risk management plan is implemented here on my Dollar Canada trade. That's the easy process of doing it. Don't go through and try to figure out all the math. It's way more complicated. It'll take you forever to even get into the trade. This technology makes shit so much easier. So this is the implementation side of your risk management plan. Now, now that we understand how to implement it, remember the first step is have a place you're wrong. Have a stop loss. Understand that if the market's going to continue trending and this stop loss is going to be based on whatever strategy you decide to develop. And again, I have videos for that in the top right hand corner and in the link in the description. Whatever your stop loss is, is where you're going to determine your risk. So if your stop loss, the pips don't matter at all. Let's say you decided you wanted a 40 pip stop loss here on this trade because you really expected the dollar Canada to move higher. Even if you, you wanted to give it a little more room is what I'm saying. If that was the case, all you'd have to do is come here to your stop loss, put in 41 pips and then put in 2% risk. And it would tell you the units to get, it would tell you how much money in your currency you are currently risking with that 2% risk. So this is what I use to implement, to actually implement my personal risk management plan on a daily basis. And now that we've talked about implementation and how to implement a risk management plan, I, I wanna talk about developing a risk management plan now. This is just how to use it once you have a risk management plan. This in no way is a developed risk management plan. So let's go ahead and do that right now. See you in a second. So now you know how to implement risk management, but implementing risk management without developing the plan properly is completely useless. It's not gonna help you at all. So now I wanna dive into actually implementing a risk management plan. A risk management plan is going to consist of three different parts. So we have our triangle of a risk management plan in the middle here. We will do RM plan and how do we develop a risk management plan? We do it in three different ways. The first part of a risk management plan is called risk capital. I'm gonna abbreviate with RC. Risk capital is an amount of money that you are okay with losing when you put it in. Anytime you put money into a speculative market like trading in any financial markets, you need to be okay with that going to zero. You do not need to trade with your life savings. You need to put it in there with the idea that there could be a day a meteor hits and you lose everything in that account and it's like it never even existed. Not a likely scenario, I'll admit, but not impossible. So risk capital is an amount of money you're okay losing and that is what you should start your trading account with. The next part of risk, a risk management plan is your risk per trade. I know that R looks really tall, but I like it. So whatever risk per trade risk per position is the next part. And that's what we're going to talk about in just a second. Also OE stands for overall exposure. These are the three parts that you have to implement in order to create a risk management plan. Risk capital, super simple. That's the amount of money you're going to put into your trading account based on your own risk tolerance and financial situation. Risk per trade is only developed after you've developed a strategy. You have to have your strategy that's been tested in historical data. Otherwise, you don't know what to risk per trade. Same exact thing with the overall exposure. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to develop risk per trade and overall exposure. Let's go ahead and jump to a spreadsheet in order to do that. Now, in order to develop these two, you have to already have a tested and proven to be profitable trading plan. If you don't, there's nothing I can do for you from here because I I can't explain that in this video. It'll be three fucking hours long if I try to explain building a strategy in this video too. Again, there are other videos I've created that talk about that top right hand corner of the screen or in the description. But right now, we're going to do the rest of the video as if you already have a tested plan. Once you have a tested plan, once you've went through the market, marked up red and green arrows, on a specific currency pair because of your wins and losses. You've tested the strategy like I do every single day. I test strategies. Once you've already tested it, you need to plug those numbers into a spreadsheet. So this is the process of developing a risk management plan. Once you plug them into a spreadsheet, it'll look something like this. You'll have all your Aussie dollar trades. Let's say you test this strategy on six different pairs. 
So right now what we're looking at is a spreadsheet with the pair, date, and win or loss. I have a one-to-one -one risk reward on each of these trades. That's why it's just one and negative one. And you will need a spreadsheet like this in order to calculate this type of thing. But and in order to calculate risk management. I do offer this in the paid program that we run. Also, I give it away for free every now and then, a spreadsheet like this. So if you wanna be alerted about the next time we give it away for free, links in the description. But you will need a spreadsheet in order to develop a risk management plan. And they're not easy to make, trust me. I'm not trying to pitch you on like buying mine. I don't, I don't it doesn't matter to me. You can go out and try to make yourself, you, one yourself or maybe you can find one online somewhere. These things are a bitch to make though. I'm just telling you that because it took me over a year to develop this one. Next up. <laughs> Now that we jump back on track, you will need to plug all of your trades into a spreadsheet. Once you have all of your trades in a spreadsheet on the specific currency pairs you've decided to trade your strategy on, once you have that done, it will look something like this. You'll have all your Aussie dollar trades with the date and the profit or loss. You'll have all your Canada Swiss, in this case, trades, all your Euro Aussie trades. They'll look something like this. Now, if we just plug this into a spreadsheet, it's not really going to give us the information we need. This is all the trades, but right now it's not set in a way where it would have been just like as if you traded it. And in our backtesting results, when developing a risk management plan, we want it to be as if we have actually traded it throughout the historical data that we tested. In order to make that happen, you will need to highlight the column that has the date in it, click sort ascending and extend the selection. This will extend the selection and now your trades will be ordered based on date. So this is the full year of 2019 with the pullback strategy I teach in the EAP training program. Now that I've done this, you can see that it's completely ascending by date. It's in order by date looking as if I actually have traded this. Then you would need to copy this data here and plug it into an appropriate spreadsheet with the right formulas. Again, this is not something I can teach in this video, nor is this something that you probably have right now, but it's something you need to get or develop on your own. Now, while in this spreadsheet, in order to develop your risk management plan, you will need to take a look at the max drawdown. This spreadsheet at least needs to be able to determine max drawdown and have a variable risk per position because this is the process of developing a risk management plan and this is what's necessary. No one said it was easy. It's just part of trading that if you don't master and do, more than likely you will lose money. Now, at this point, and I'm not being harsh, I'm, I'm just being real with you. I'm trying to help you understand how to not lose money and this is gonna be part of that journey. Now, once you have this max drawdown in place, right now we're at 9%, what you can do in order to develop the risk management plan properly is if you are a person that let's say does is not tolerant to a 9% drawdown being your maximum drawdown. You don't want 9% of your account to go away at any moment. Then you can take your risk per position here and drop it to 1%. Having a variable risk per position in the spreadsheet allows us to do that. So now that we've dropped it, we now have a 4% max drawdown that's pretty good, right at 5%. That's something I would be able to tolerate. I personally could tolerate 9%, no problem. What if you're someone that's really tolerant in terms of risk, you don't mind risking or losing a maximum drawdown of 20%, then you could do something like a 4% risk per trade and still only have an 18% max drawdown. The whole point of this is after a strategy has been developed and you're on the path to developing a risk management plan, you're gonna need to figure out what your maximum risk per position is going to be. And the way you figure that out, the way we make an educated guess as to the future maximum drawdown we're going to have is through that back tested data of the specific strategy or system you've developed or learned from someone else. So in this process, now we have developed a risk per position that you are comfortable with. It's an arbitrary number right now because it's something you have to figure out that you can tolerate or not tolerate. If this is an 18% drawdown and it's too much for you, you need to change your risk per position to a lower number until it's a number you can tolerate. So for me, a 10% drawdown is totally fine. I will risk 1% or 2% per trade using this specific strategy, using the pullback strategy on these specific pairs based on my back testing results. I hope that wasn't too complicated or over anyone's head. I know it's not a super simple process. I know it's not easy. I tried to make it as easy as possible. This is the thing most trading teachers won't share with you. This is a process you will have to go through. 
and they won't share it because they want to make trading seem as easy as possible when in reality if you skip this step you very likely will blow accounts and end up never becoming a professional trader so this is how you develop your risk per trade after you have that the only thing to do is develop an overall exposure that you're comfortable with if you over the the third part remember we have three parts in our risk management plan the third part is overall exposure in order to develop overall exposure now you have risk per trade let's say it's two percent and you only want to risk ten percent of your total account at any one given moment that means you can be at five trades at once if you enjoyed this content and you would like to further advance your trading education and join some of your fellow traders that you'll see comments from on the screen right now, then I'd like to invite you to join our VIP EAP training program by clicking the top link in the description. By doing so, you'll land on a page that'll tell you a little more about the EAP training program. In this program, I'll be sharing with you all of my favorite strategies and systems along with risk management and discipline techniques that I use as well as showing you my top three to five trades every single week so that you can follow along and get better at trading as you learn and grow you'll also be able to watch me trade through this process through weekly review videos where I'll be sharing how the strategies are performing and helping you walking you through the process of becoming a more disciplined trader. So if that's something that interests you, then feel free to click that top link in the description and I look forward to seeing you there. I also give priority support to anyone involved in that program. You can email me at any time and I'll be there to answer any questions that you have regarding trading. If not, that's totally fine too. Make sure you are subscribed here and keep it locked at the trading channel for more valuable content. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I hope you have a green month, week, day. I hope you trade green forever, and I will talk to you in the next video. See you soon.